Hi everybody, I'm Dave Aronson, and in this video I'm going to tell you why we prepend to lists instead of appending like we're used to when using immutable data. The way lists are implemented in most languages, and especially ones with immutable data, boils down to essentially the classic basic data structure of the singly linked list. Each node has a piece of data and a pointer to the next node. So let's take a look at what happens when you append to a singly linked list with regular old mutable data. Here we have an element, we'll call it A because it contains that data, just the letter A, and its next pointer is pointing down rather than at another node to indicate that it's the last item in the list. Usually this would be some special value that the language uses, like uh, with a name like nil or null or none or nothing or El Zilcherino if you're not into the whole brevity thing. Suppose we want to add element B. We create it with a null next pointer and change A's next pointer to point to B. And likewise for adding C and D. So far, so good, straight out of the CS 101 textbooks. Well, maybe 201, whatever. But now let's try it with immutable data. I've fast forwarded to where we already have A, B, and C, and we want to add D. Following the same steps as before, we would create D with a null next pointer and change C's next pointer to point at D. But now, we can't change that next pointer because we're using immutable data. Instead, we have to create a whole new C, let's call it C prime, to point at D and throw away the old one. Any existing reference to C are, is now invalid and needs to be updated. For instance, B's next pointer. So we change that to point at the new C right? No. Just like with C's next pointer, we can't change this because it's immutable. So we need a whole new B, and for the same reason a whole new A, all the way back to the front of the list. In short, appending with immutable data means reconstructing the entire list. That takes it from a quick constant time operation to linear time proportional to how many elements are already in the list. But since we're doing it for every input item, each time we're adding something to the list, the runtime of processing the entire input is multiplied, taking it from linear to quadratic, proportional to the square of the number of inputs. It also churns through memory a lot more, being quadratic in memory allocation and garbage collection, though at least not in total usage at any one time. Now let's look at prepending to a list, whether mutable or not. We've got element A with a null next pointer, and to prepend B, we create it already pointing to A, and then we have to, well, we don't have to do anything. We're done. And likewise for prepending C and D. No must, no fuss, no mutation, no extra allocation, no garbage creation for later collectation. It's back to a small constant time per item for a reasonable linear time to process the whole list. But wait, there's more. We're not quite done because the list is backwards. Fortunately, most modern languages have functions, or methods, whatever, built in to reverse a list. This takes a little bit of time, but trivial, and only linearly proportional to the length of the list. Most importantly, though, it's only done once, in addition to the list processing, not for every element. So the overall runtime for processing the entire input list is only added, not multiplied, so it stays linear. With non-trivial lists of immutable data, this is a big win 
over the quadratic performance of appending, and that is why we append, why we prepend, sorry.